Hi everybody, welcome. Continuing our study in uh, 1 Corinthians. We're in chapter 7. Before we get started, as always, we just come together in a prayer. So, dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you guide us and that your Spirit is with us as we study your Word, Father. And as we walk with you in these last days, we seek courage, we seek wisdom, and we seek discernment as we study your Word, Father. And we study and we pray in the name of Yeshua, HaMashiach, our risen Messiah, Jesus Christ, and your Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh. Amen. Seven one. Now about what you ask, is it advisable for a man not to marry? Because sexual immorality is so rampant, every man should have his own wife, and every woman should have her own husband. A husband should fulfill his obligation to his wife, and a wife should do the same for her husband. And this obligation is why people come to marry. They come to marry because the desires of the flesh are such that they are attracted and that they they care for each other and they they have the emotions associated with that that love of 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 human humanness i guess and uh the the obligation is is a sexual obligation 7 4 a wife does not have authority over her own body but her husband does in the same way a husband doesn't have authority over his own body but his wife does basically what he's saying is i mean if you're living a righteous life if you're loving caring trusting you know forgiving and you're not at each other's throats and you're living in harmony together you you should not withhold sex from your partner okay because what that does is the reason they came together was 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 the attraction was the physical nature of two human beings attracted to each other to come together okay and the wife does not have authority over her own body but her husband does does this mean he can just i mean it means she should not refuse okay doesn't mean he can just take what he wants, but it does mean she should not refuse him. If she has issues with him, then one of them are not living according to God's will, and the harmony in their relationship is missing. Okay. Seven five. Do not withhold yourselves from each other unless you agree to do so just for a set time in order to devote yourselves to prayer. Then you should come together again so that Satan does not tempt you through your lack of self-control. So what he's saying is, don't withhold yourselves from each other. You know, you got to take one for the team, so to speak, you know, to keep the team together. Okay, because, you know, he, what, what Paul is saying here, he's saying, don't deny your husband or wife sexual pleasure okay unless you're fasting together and agreeing on it and, and devoting yourselves wholly and then you should come together again so that Satan does not tempt you through your lack of self-control because if you're withholding sexual relations from your partner they become sexually frustrated. Now Satan is going to work that. And he's going to bring the women and bring the men and bring the, the, the reasons and the excuses into your life. Okay? You need to avoid that. He says in 7.6, But I say this as a concession, not as a command. I wish that everyone would be unmarried like I am. However, each person has a special gift from God, one this and another that. And Paul's special gift is that he's been chosen to be a, a prophet. He's been chosen to, to call the Gentiles to the Lord. And in that, he has no time to settle down. and be, He's moving on the move. Okay. However, if they cannot control themselves, they should get married. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Okay. And uh, seven nine, first Corinthians seven nine, and go to 
King James. This burn is to be ignited, to glow, to be inflamed with anger, grief, or lust. Okay? It is better to marry than to be inflamed with lust. Okay? To married people, I give this command. Not really I, but the Lord. A wife must not leave her husband. But if she does leave him, she must remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband. Likewise, a husband must not abandon his wife. I, not the Lord, say to the rest of you, if a brother has a wife who is an unbeliever and she is willing to live with him, he must not abandon her. And if a woman has a husband who is an unbeliever and he is willing to live with her, she must not abandon him. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified because of his wife, and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified because of her husband. Otherwise your children would be unclean, but now they are holy. In this term, sanctified, okay, to be made holy, okay, to be, to, to, to be made pure, ceremonially pure is, is the sense when you prepare a, a sacrifice, okay. It becomes holy by preparing it. And this, this, this idea that Paul is talking about, and he's not saying it's from the Lord, but he's saying it's from him, and what his understanding is, is that because they love you, and you believe in the Lord, but they don't know this or that, or this way or the other, and have not been called at that moment, that, that because they don't hate you, and because they love you, and it's not a it's not a uh, a, a point of of anger discussion that the person is accepting your Lord, okay, and that they are sanctified because their love for you and you love the Lord, okay. But if the unbelieving partner leaves, let them go. In such cases, the brother or sister is not under obligation. God has called you to live in peace, wife. You might be able to say, God has called you to live in peace because the other end was they don't believe in what you believe. They're always a point of dissension and antagonism. Okay? Let them go. Wife, you might be able to save your husband. Husband, you might be able to save your wife. Nevertheless, everyone should live in the life that the Lord gave them and to which God called them. This is my rule in all the churches. Was anyone circumcised when he was called? He should not try to change that. Was anyone uncircumcised when he was called? He should not get circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but obeying God's commandments is everything. Everyone should stay in the same condition in which he was called. Were you a slave when you were called? Do not let that bother you. Of course, if you have a chance to become free, take advantage of the opportunity. For the slave who has been called to belong to the Lord is the Lord's free person. In the same way, the free person who has been called is the Messiah's slave. You were bought for a price. Stop becoming slaves of people. Meaning, <coughs> meaning in your mind, you're a slave of this person. That in your mind you need to know you are a slave of Messiah. And Messiah is asking you to behave in a certain way that none of that matters because he will provide everything you need. And if your slave master is whooping you, you forgive them. It's all in Corinthians. We read all, we've read all this. Is it crazy? No, it's complete and utter faith in the Lord that has your place and position and status irrelevant. Okay. Brothers, everyone should stay in the same condition in which he was called by God. Now concerning virgins, although I do not have any command from the Lord, I will give you my opinion as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. In view of the present crisis, and this, is, this crisis is rampant sexual immorality, I think it is prudent for a man to stay as he is. Have you become committed to a wife? Stop trying to get release from your commitment. Have you been freed from your commitment to a wife? Stop looking for one. But if you do get married, you have not sinned, 
And if a virgin gets married, she has not sinned. However, these people will experience trouble in this life, and I want to spare you from that. Okay? And what is this trouble? They, they, the trouble is their allegiance to each other and their desire to please each other sometimes gets in the way of, of our desire to please the Lord. Okay? <laughs> He wants to spare you from that, 729. This is what I mean, brothers. The time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as though they had none. And those who mourn as though they did not mourn. And the widows. And those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing. And those who buy as though they did not own a thing. Okay? Those, the, and those who mourn as though they did not mourn. It's, what are you mourning for? You're mourning for things of this world. What are you rejoicing for? You're rejoicing for things of this world. And those who buy as though they did not own a thing. And those who use the things in the world as though they were not dependent on them. And those who use the things of this world as though they were not dependent on them. For the world in its present form is passing away. 2,000 years ago, he's saying this. I want you to be free from concerns. An unmarried man is concerned about the things of the Lord... That it and and that the world in its present form is passing away, and whether you believe it's going to end today, tomorrow, or the next day, the third, third, and everywhere, it doesn't matter because you are passing away, day by day. You are slowly dying. Your organic, electromagnetic configuration is dissipating at a certain rate, and and eventually you will be with the Lord, and eventually you will be asleep and to wake to judgment, okay? I want you to be free from concerns. An unmarried man is concerned about the things of the Lord, that is, about how he can please the Lord. But a married man is concerned about the things of this world, that is, about how he can please his wife. And so his attention is divided. An unmarried woman or virgin is concerned about the affairs of the Lord, so that she may be holy in body and spirit. But a married woman is concerned about the affairs of this world, that is, about how she can please her husband. I'm saying this for your benefit, not to put a noose around your necks, but to promote good order and unhindered devotion to the Lord. And that's what he's, he's preaching. His message is unhindered devotion. Okay, so we're at, so to the point to where you stand out to the community as separated. Okay? <laughs> If a man thinks he is not behaving properly toward his virgin, and if his passion is so strong that he feels he ought to marry her, let him do what he wants. He isn't sinning. Let them get married. However, if a man stands firm in his resolve, feels no necessity, and has made up his mind to keep her a virgin, he will be acting appropriately. If a virgin has been betrothed to him, and he's engaging in physical conduct that is sexual in nature, and it's getting a little carried away, he is to marry her, okay? <clears throat> but if a man stands firm in his resolve, feels no necessity, feels as though he's living for the Lord and only for the Lord, the sexual um, flesh man is, is put in check, so to speak, and he's not doing anything wrong. He doesn't need to marry her. She's his, and by her remaining a virgin, allows her to focus on Devotion, un, unhindered devotion to the Lord. Okay. However, if a man stands firm in his resolve, feels no necessity, and made up his mind to keep her a virgin, he will be acting appropriately. So then the man who marries the virgin acts appropriately, but the man who refrains from marriage does even better because he doesn't bring all these other tangibles into play. The sexual relationship. The, the monetary relationship to please the wife as she sees other wives having this and that and what she needs. And, and, and he does even better because they're both devoting their lives to the Lord. Okay? A wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives, but if her husband dies, she is free to marry anyone she wishes, only in the Lord. However, in my opinion, she will be happier if she stays as she is. And in saying this, I think that I, too, have God's spirit. So, you know, Paul's, 
Paul's quick to point out when he's speaking, and he's quick to point out when his revelations from God or his knowledge of the Word of God is conveying God's will. And and what he's saying here is, you know, the Torah allows a widow to marry. He's saying only in the Lord. Don't marry an unbeliever, okay? Marry somebody who believes what you believe so there's less chance for friction in the relationship but he says in his opinion she'll be happier if she stays as she is and in saying this I think that I too have God's spirit and what he's saying is they would be happier to remain single, celibate, devoting their life to the Lord and although they may think they will be happier with a, a new husband as we've seen there, there are all these other things that come into play that that inhibit to complete devotion, unhindered devotion to the Lord. So, that's Paul's take on, on relationships. Um, take it for what it is. Go with your heart on this and understand that you have, you have an opportunity to be celibate and devote your life to the Lord. You have an opportunity to, to become married so that you don't burn with passion. You don't that you don't become inflamed with the the desires and lusts of this world, and especially you know I wouldn't even think, I used to think oh especially for men with the way the media portrays women, but look what they've done with these men and these boys and these advertisements so that women have this certain certain desire that that w that's stimulated by the um, the images our society um, projects so. It's, it's now even harder. It's so hard right now compared to when Paul was speaking because the sexual innuendo that's, that's constant in the dialogue in the media and the sexual images that are constantly being projected by the media. You know, they say they are Jews, but they're the synagogue of Satan. Okay, they're doing his work to, to bring in... Uh, to bring in a, a, a complete moral decay in society and they're doing a great job okay and it's hard for uh, for men and women to avoid these images so they do play a, a, a part in in our decision making and the images of, of the diamond rings and the, the the Range Rovers and the Mercedes and the Porsches and the 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 idea that your love is conveyed in your monetary commitment to your spouse it's all these things uh inhibit an unhindered devotion to the lord so think about it you know let it let it digest within yourself and for those who are married you know you need to consider if you're if, if either one of you are withholding relationships from from the spouse it's only because you're not both walking in a path with the Lord because if you were then you wouldn't have a problem allowing that person to have their way with you in the sense that you know you you have to please your husband he's your husband you have to please your wife she is your wife and so um it all begins with the walk with the Lord so that those 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 arguments and those petty accusations and resentments and things like that just they have to they have to be dealt with they have to be cast away and you have to to recommit to living with the Lord and then when everybody's on the same page and we have forgiven and we're moved on now it starts over again you start withholding this intimacy it'll start to build up and Satan will come in and and have his way so that's my study for today i love you guys thanks for joining me and as always you know i just thank you so much for being here and i love you peace